today we will discuss mesh analysis and i believe it will add a lot of value to you as it's just uh, the continuation of what we have been talking about for a while we've been talking about circuit analysis and then we have used a lot of analysis to to check out you know how to handle deal with and analyze circuit so the next one we want to work on now is mesh analysis okay now for mesh analysis you apply kvl around loops in the circuit to solve a current first that's what you do okay so as you can see here this is a mesh created this is like a mesh this this is a mesh this is another mesh this is another mesh here this is another mesh here all right so you can see here we have one two three four meshes here as the case may be so a mesh is a loop that contains no elements within it okay it's a loop that has no elements within it all right a super mesh is an exception as we'll recover as we move on we're going to see what super meshes are as we go on all right so uh, let's take it a step further from here so this, this gives you a good picture of what a mesh is from what i just explained a couple of minutes ago what you will find out here is uh, mesh currents okay so when you are carrying out a mesh analysis you you, you want to create mesh currents okay so what you can see here is that we have a circuit all right and you can see we have a voltage source here we have uh, a resist a resistor here of six ohms we have another resistor here we have another resistor here and then we have another voltage source here all right so what you will find out here is that we have two meshes this is the first mesh mesh one and then this is another another mesh that we have here this direction is it clockwise or anti-clockwise clockwise you know we have talked about it right from the beginning of the class and most of the time we try what we do is we draw a clockwise uh flow around meshes okay so uh, around a loop whenever we have a loop uh, this is a clockwise movement and as you can see it shows us a flow of current in the real sense of it it shows that current is flowing this way here we have another clockwise you know low of current for i2 yeah. so if you apply kvl to this particular mesh for the first mesh what do you have uh, what did we say about our direction of flow once we do this we usually say that we for voltage sources we usually make sure that we choose the polarity or the sign of the point where the clockwise low is traversing the voltage source from so since we have our flow this way, it means it is traversing from negative to positive. Okay, so the current is traversing from negative to positive. So what would be the sign of this 42 volt? Since we have we want to carry out KVL around this, what would be the sign of 42? So that is why we have minus 42 here. All right. Uh, the voltage across this six ohms will be V equal to IR. The I is I1 and then the resistance is six. So it's come come plus six I1. Okay. Now we go to this particular place. What you will find here is that this particular I1 is coming down like this. Can you see that? It's coming down like this, right? On I3, let me make it clear. Okay, so we have, this is I1 coming down on I3. And you would also find out that I2 is going up on the same I3. Can you see that on the second mesh, I2. So the current passing through I3 will be I1 minus I2. If we are dealing with mesh one can you see that we are new with mesh one so uh the current going here will be i1 minus the current going up on the same resistance i2 so the current passing through i3 is going to be i1 minus i2 assuming the current passing through our resistance i2 is also uh in the same direction it's going to be i1 plus i2 but because it is going up like this and this is coming down and we're dealing with the mesh one so i1 becomes the one that has positive it becomes i1 minus i2 do we all follow that so we have plus three i1 minus i2 equals zero so if you expand this you will have uh three i1 plus six i1 this is nine i1 minus three i2 equal to 42 that becomes equation one all right now we're gonna implement the same procedure for the second mesh okay so um apply kpl to the right hand mesh okay, we just finished with the left hand mesh now for the right hand mesh what you will find out is we also have our you know mesh current coming 
down clockwise. So we're going to start with this resistance, 3 ohms resistance. So you can see that this time around, the current uh, passing through I passing through 3 ohms is I1 minus I2, as we have recognized, okay, but it is coming down. While the current on mesh 2 is going up, right, it's against the current coming down. So it's going to be minus 3 multiplied by this current will give us a voltage across this 3 ohm resistor. So it becomes minus 3 I1 minus I2. All right. When you get to this place, it becomes plus 4 I2. And then because this clockwise movement is traversing this 10 volt source from negative to positive, it, it, it becomes minus 10 volts equal to 0. So if you rearrange this, you expand this bracket, rearrange it, you're going to have minus 3 I1 plus 7 I2 equal to 10. Now we have two equations. Okay, the two equations we have, we have two equations, we have two unknown so this becomes very easy to solve for i1 and for i2 if you do that you obtain your i1 equal to 6 amperes you obtain your i2 equal to 4 amperes i1 minus i2 will be 6 minus 4 that gives you 2 amperes so it means 2 amperes is actually passing through uh the it's actually passing through the 3 ohms resistor you know i1 6 amperes is passing through the 6 ohms resistor and then i2 4 amperes is passing through the 4 ohms resistor okay so uh, this is exactly how to deal uh, with mesh currents how to deal with mesh analysis any questions so far so when you have when you have two meshes you're gonna have two equations when you have three meshes you're gonna have three equations when you have four meshes you're gonna have four equations okay oh but in certain cases when we are dealing with the super mesh things are going to be different. When we get there, I'm going to explain to you how things will be different. If the circuit has M meshes, then you need M independent equations to solve for the mesh curve. All right, so let's take it a step further and then go on. So here is a simple example. So use mesh analysis to determine the three mesh currents in the following circuit. So what you will find here is that we have, you know, different mesh currents. Okay, so we have I1, we have I2, we have I3, okay, so, and you can see we have one, two, three, three mesh here. You can see we have one, two, two voltage sources, and then we have uh, different, different um, uh, resistances placed at different locations. The first thing you want to do is to deal with mesh one. When you have mesh one, using, going by our sign and the polarity notations, with this is clockwise and traversing from negative to positive on some volts this becomes minus seven plus when you get to i1 you will find out that the current passing through i1 we have two currents right one is coming down like this one coming down is what is the name of the current coming down be i1 so what about the one going off it's gonna be i2 here all right so if you have i2 here it simply means the current passing through the one ohm resistor be i1 minus i2 once you have that, it becomes minus 7 plus the value of this resistor, which is 1, multiplied by I1 minus I2. And we are, since we are still on loop 1, you know, the, 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 the clockwise mesh is actually traversing from positive 6 volt to negative 6 volt, right? So this becomes plus 6, as you can see here. And then here again, you're going to have another current coming down here, which is going to be I1, right? And then another current going up. Which current is going up on the 2 ohm resistor? I3 is going up here, as you can see here. So that simply means the current passing these two ohm resistors to be I1 minus I3. All right. So what you have here is plus six, then plus two multiplied by I1 minus I3. Okay, equal to zero. If you expand these brackets and then you rearrange all the values you have here, you obtain three I1 minus I2 minus two I3 equal to one. That becomes the equation one from the first mesh. So uh, if we go ahead, what we're gonna have for mesh two is gonna be something similar to what we just had here. So for mesh two, can you tell me what we have for mesh two? So you can see we have one here, all right? So you have I2 minus I1 in this particular case, okay? Mm -hmm. This mesh is actually from I2, so it becomes I2 minus I1. Now you can see use I1 minus I2 
if you do I1 minus I2, that means you are saying that the current coming down here, the current across 1 ohms is coming down and this is going up. So you can do I1 minus I2 and then you put minus here. So uh, in the real sense of it, this is going to be like, uh, if you want to use, use I1 minus I2, it's just going to be the same thing as minus 1, right, into bracket I1 minus I2, okay? It will still mean the same thing as this. Once you expand it, you have minus I1 plus I2, which is exactly what we have here. Do you understand everybody? You know when you can use I2 minus I1 and I1 minus I2, when you can use any one of them, but you have to make sure that you understand what is getting on so you can use the correct sign and the correct polarity. Okay, so let's let's take it a step further then. You have I I2 I2 minus I1 multiplied by 1. Okay, and then if you continue this way, you find another two ohms here. So uh, this becomes plus 2 multiplied by I2 because I2 is just coming down here and then you come 3 ohms so you find out that here on 3 ohms we have something going this way is I2 and then I3 is coming this way and that's in 3 ohms so both of them are in different directions so this becomes I2 minus I3 multiplied by 3 and then for loop 2 we are done and everything is going to be equal to 0 so when you, you know, uh, carry out the mathematical arithmetic addition, subtraction and these and open the bracket, you obtain minus I1 plus 6I2 minus 3I3 equals zero. That becomes equation 2. We can then take it a step further. For loop 3, what do we have? Let's start with 2 ohms. For loop 3, I want you to tell me what we're going to have. Let's start from this 2 here. If we start from 2, what do we have? We're going to have 2, I3, minus I1. If we want to use I1 minus I3, we just put minus here, right? But if we do it like this, we keep it this way, all right? What's the next thing? Minus 6, because we're traversing from negative to positive. What about an I3? What do we have? Plus 3 into bracket, I3, minus what? So if you want, you can also make it I2 minus I3, right? But this is not going to be what? Negative. Okay, good. You guys are getting the you're getting the trick now. And then we continue until we get to here. So we have plus one i three and everything will be equal to zero. So if we expand all of these and play with it, we have two i three minus two i one, right? Plus three i three minus three i two plus i three equal to take the six the other way so all things been equal this is not what it should be uh, now that i believe you guys know what it's going to let's start to check and see exactly what what they're talking about so what we're going to have is minus two i1 minus three i2 plus six i3 equal to six so that's what we have there as our equation three so you can see now we have three equations and then we have three unknown so you can use simultaneous equation any method of simultaneous equation that you know either Kramer's rule or substitution method whatever works for you you can use to solve the sum of no equation and then you can have your, your answers so after solving we got i1 to be 3 amperes i2 to be 2 amperes and i3 to be 3 amperes